coming here from so many different countries. I mean, from Brazil, from Poland, from Switzerland, from Italy. I mean, it's staggering, you know? And to think that this simple little Zoom thing can touch people in so many parts of the world, from Norway, excuse me, Holland. I mean, it's incredible. Albania, I mean, it's really incredible that this simple little Germany, this simple little Israel, you know, can touch you know, Belgium, I keep seeing people <laughs> from all over the world. I think it's simply an amazing thing. I wish it would just spread. I don't know how to make it spread or how it would continue to spread so that more and more people can take advantage of the kind of miracle that these classes are. These classes are really priceless, you know, and I just, I'm so grateful to just look out and see people from so many different places. It was always a dream of mine when I was younger. How could I get people from all these places I traveled to in one spot? COVID-19, you know, created this thing and made it possible. And I'm very grateful to do this. It's just staggering. And thank you all for being here, participating in this. And we'll have a meditation. And then if there are any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. And does anyone have a question they'd like to ask? Please try and sit still, everyone. Uh, just, you know, we might get cut off because, you know, this MailChimp that I use for the emails, they allot me an hour and three quarters. And with the hour missed earlier, and so just in case, don't worry about it. It's not me or anything. It's just technological stuff. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? These classes are really very precious and I, I mean, they're almost priceless to be able to spend an hour three times a week here doing this is kind of extraordinary for me. And as I always say, I'm grateful to do them. I'm grateful to share whatever I've learned, whatever it is I've learned in my life, the good, the bad, the bullshit, the indifference, the this, whatever. You know, if it gives you any inspiration to work on yourself and to understand how the power of what it means to be connected to higher energy in the universe, how it's a healing power, it's a restorative power, it's, a, you know, it's, it's just remarkable in what it brings to the life of a human being. Uh, in a man, it's a power that enables us to get past our tensions, our insecurities, our anxieties, our fears about life. I mean, it does all of this. And our job is to just open to it and let it do what it wants to do, you know, <laughs> is to really get us to a place where we're really happy people, people full of love and joy and creativity. And we're not afraid to experiment with our lives and to live you know, uh, in a creative and wonderful way. So, I mean, to me, this is very precious. This is very remarkable that in this lifetime of mine, I've been given the opportunity to do this and that you all have come here to participate in this and hopefully to learn from this. And the most important thing of all is to apply it to one's life in a practical way. You know, not to live 
in you know alternate realities and dreams of this, but practically with what we have to deal with every day, family or jobs or people in our life, the, the political, economic environments, this COVID-19 thing that is paralyzing the world. I mean, I was thinking seriously of making a trip to Europe because I've had those two vaccinations. And then I began to investigate and discover the whole, the whole continent is closed up. It's extraordinary how this, you know, invisible enemy has just paralyzed the world. But in the situation, if we go deep enough inside ourselves, we learn how to use it. We learn how to use whatever conditions we are living in to help us to grow and get closer to God and get closer to really having a spiritual life. That's what it's for. It's just a reminder that if you reach into the external world for answers, you know, it's like reaching into a dream for answers to very practical things. You know, there are no answers. The answers are inside, deep inside all of us. That's where the answers are. And our job really literally on the earth is to learn how to open so we can receive that energy that will give us answers, that will open the doors, the pathway to not only a spiritual life, but just living here and being a happy person. <clears throat> it's amazing how it works. It's so amazing that most people don't even believe it. Even if they experience it, they don't believe it, you know? <laughs> it's extraordinary. And it takes time for it to truly recondition us inside to where the belief becomes so real that it becomes very practical in our daily lives. We can use it, we can grow with it, we can you know, thrive with it, it creates abundance, it creates you know, all the miracles in life that we truly want to live with. And there's no substitute for it. I'm not saying there's no substitute for what I teach. Thank God there are many different teachers that do many different things. But there's no substitute for deep spiritual work in whatever way we do it. <clears throat> because it's the one thing that cuts through all the stuff <clears throat> that accumulates inside people that keep them from ever attaining the things I'm talking about. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? It's really good when you ask questions. If there are no questions, I'll have to live with it. <laughs> Stuart, yes. I can try to ask uh, one question. Um, is it possible to, um, to love our pain <laughs> or our trauma when we are doing that? Well, you know, look, you have pain, you have trauma. Try to love it. Try to like it. Try to understand that it comes to you as a reminder that it's not an enemy. It's a reminder that you need to really go deeper inside yourself in order to transform that pain into, you know, an open heart, into a balance, harmony in yourself, a quiet mind. So you don't get anywhere by hating your pain. You know, you get someplace by just saying, okay, what do you have to teach me? What do you have to teach me about the way I need to live? And that will turn the whole thing around suddenly. You know, a lot of our pain gets bigger because we focus our anger. We, you know, our minds dwell on it all the time. We feed it and it grows in a crazy way inside us. But if we stop feeding it, 
And we just say, okay, what do you have to teach me? You're not my enemy. I know it's pain and pain is difficult, but what does it have to teach me? How can I grow because of this pain? How can I use the pain as a reminder of what I have to build inside myself that's strong enough so that the pain will dissolve and go away? And I hate to say it, there's always gonna be some kind of pain, physical, emotional, mental. It's just life. It's what life brings to us. I mean, even the Buddha said suffering is the fastest path to God. And I, this, I didn't make this up. This comes directly from one of the Buddhist quotes. And he's right. He was right because it is a constant reminder that we need to go deeper and deeper inside in order to dredge up all the things that are creating the pain so we can just flush them out to sea. We can get rid of them. And ultimately, that depth leads to one place, and that's to a connection with higher energy in the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. So I'm not saying, you know, mass, you know, kistically love your pain. You know, I'm saying be conscious about the way you use it and allow it to really teach you what you've got to do. It's three o'clock. Your tiredness, your boredom, your laziness, allow it to teach you what you have to do to grow, you know? And then it's no longer the enemy, it's the teacher. And I promise you, it'll go away. Because in order to master that pain, you got to go to a place so deep in yourself to uncover so much chi and power and harm balance in yourself that that pain will get absorbed into it and it'll disappear. It might come back you know, again, but then it's a reminder, you got to keep going deeper. And then, I mean, I have pain, you know, it doesn't stop me from doing what I do. In fact, it's just, again, a reminder, I have to really go deep inside myself to master it. Wow. There, there are no it's real helped. enemies, you know, there are teachers. They really aren't enemies. Life when is it's uh, coming out, hmm? when it's coming out and it was hurt my heart when, when you are, were talking. So, so just, and, and Laura, just, Laura, just feel gratitude in your heart and that pain will go away. I'm telling you, just feel gratitude, feel love in your heart. Just let your heart open, that pain. The reason why it hurts your heart is that you get tighter there. So the pain grows. But if you just open like a flower, get, it's, it's like nobility of soul to be bigger than your pain by just opening your heart and having gratitude. The pain will go away. It gets more powerful because we get tighter. And then it, squeezes it it really just makes the situation worse but you just open and say okay what do i have to lose by just feeling gratitude love in my heart and that pain will just dissolve inside you go away again it might come back because you know we get out of class we start thinking and emotions and pressures of life, it bring, but then it's just a reminder, we still have to grow. We still have to evolve in ourselves. Now, this is not easy to do. I'm not saying this is easy, but my God, it's worth the effort than allowing pain to cripple us. And sometimes we even welcome the pain because it's so familiar. We don't know how to live any other way. It's a matter of reconditioning our entire inner life so that we don't do things like that. We just, okay, how do I get rid? I gotta open. I have to feel that sweetness, that love, that gratitude in my heart. I have to feel that sense of balance and harmony in myself. What a better way to live. 
And if pain reminds you to do that, then pain is not an enemy. It's a friend. It's just reminding you about what you have to do to grow in your mind. And that's fantastic. And I'm saying, you don't have to go looking to make pain. Everybody has pain. Everybody. I once wrote in one of my books, the common denominator on the earth is, you know, pain and suffering. It's, it's the, you know, that is the common denominator for all human beings. Now, what's not part of that common denominator is making a conscious effort to use it to grow in your life. That's something almost nobody does. Because people have no training, they don't know how to do it, and they just kind of repress it. At best, they can repress it, bury it somewhere inside. You know, and they believe it doesn't exist. And then it turns them into, I mean, I don't know what, you know, they look like mummies, you know? I know. Yeah. I used to do that before. Yeah, you, me too. <laughs> I stopped doing it a long time ago, <laughs> and life has been a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I have a question, Stuart. I want to yes. follow up. Um, so practically, when you when you when you experience pain or anger or something, the trick is then you turn it into peace, or you you try to find in yourself peace or yeah. whenever a hard storm is you try to find a place of peace yeah the trick That's Paul, it. is it's not a trick it's learning the master your inner life yes. and when you have anger you have pain you know then you have also will and you have a need to grow you can use the will along with the double breathing exercise to channel that pain into the chakra right below the navel. That pain will become chi. Chi is power, it's harmony, it's balance in a human being. And if you keep doing that, eventually the pain will start listening to you. The anger will start listening to you because you will have mastered it because you're using your will in a way that is amazing. Nobody uses their will that way. Internalizing the will to draw the anger, the pain, the unhappiness, the depression into that chakra below the navel to become chi, harmony, balance, rootedness, power. That's, that's, it's not a trick. It's just mastery of your inner self, learning how to do it then it just comes, you do it. I mean, when I was 20 years old, 25 years old, 20, I mean, I would get depressed for three, four, five months at a time. It was horrible. And I knew when it was gonna come and I didn't know how to do anything about it. Then after I met Rudy and I learned this, you know, and I, and I learned this, and what, what I'm talking about, I mean, I can get rid of those sensations of depression I mean, in seconds, literally, just bringing them down here. But it took time to learn to master this. It doesn't come, you know, in a few months. It comes after doing this and working on it and really mastering your will and tapping into that need to grow and then being able to bring your mind down to the chakra below the navel opening and allowing that depression, that anger to go there and gets transformed. There's just energy. When it's in your head and your emotions, it's energy without control. When it gets into the chakra below the navel, it becomes harmony and balance. So it's not a trick, it's really mastery of one's inner self that you perfect. It's like learning how to, you know, I don't know, play a piano, you know? You have to master the craft. And when you master the craft, if you're really open inside, all the creativity flows through. 
I mean, the other day I listened to three versions of Pergolesi's Stabat Mata, which is a piece of music I really love. Each one of them is completely different. So I finally found one that was extraordinary. I mean, it was, you could feel the creative energy flowing through the conductor, the musicians, and it was extraordinary. So, I mean, that, that's what I'm, I don't know how to put it. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It's mastery of craft. Meditation is a craft. That's all it is. Writing you is a craft. You've got to master the craft and the creativity flows. Yes, you had, go ahead, I'm sorry. Actually, Yes, actually, you need to get very conscious of the will, and all it, every time when you get a, when you get like uh, pain or anger, you have to uh, put your will there, and ask yourself the question: Will I choose for anger or will I choose for? You don't even have to ask a question, Paul. You just bring it down. But in the beginning, maybe to. to oh, get in the beginning, but then you just bring it down, and it will transform itself if you bring it down. I mean that. Work at it, you know, give it a shot and, you know, and, and you master the craft and I'm telling you it. I can only talk from my own life. I'm not talking about having read this in a book. When I was 20, 25 years old, I was depressed for months. Months I would have depression. I couldn't shake it. It was so horrible. And then when I heard Rudy talk about these things and I started doing them, it took a couple of years, two, three years to recondition my inner life. And I began to see how it worked. And then years later, I, you know, it's like, I don't have time or energy for depression. I don't, I, it comes, yeah, I get touches of it, bing, right down, finished. Anger. I mean, a lot of people, they do a lot of stuff that would really piss me off. And, you know, 10 years ago, 50, I would have really got pissed off, you know? And now I'm just like, okay, take it down. What does it matter? You know, what do I, I don't need that soap opera, that drama that, you know, and it all changes in five seconds, it all changes anyway, you know? Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, we'll have a class on Tuesday. And again, thank you. God bless you all for being here, for <sighs> allowing me to at least share my life with you. And I, I, you know, I can't tell you how grateful I am for this. So bless you all. I hope to see you all on Tuesday and you know be the same just check you know check the time because as I told you all at the beginning of this we moved the clock up an hour here so make sure that you synchronize your time with the time that's in the east coast of the United States and bless you thank you and I hope to see everybody soon thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.